Hello, it's Jason Payne for Cold Banker Dan Hop Realtors. Today I'm in New Braunfels, Texas at a journey home model, but I'm not here for the builder. I'm here for some wonderful information by one of my favorite lenders, Pilgrim Mortgage. We've got Amy Bastian and Wes Cleckley out here, and they're going to give us their opinion of the market, and uh, they're going to pull up their little crystal ball and give us their opinion of what direction the market's going. Let's go hear what they have to say. So we're going to do our best and kind of estimate and kind of pull from different sources that we've heard what it is. I think it's really important to keep following the information throughout the year because things are going to change. You know, there's there's things that are changing just like last year. So though this is our kind of what we're seeing right now is kind of the general consensus of predictions for 2024. I think to be a great agent, you really have to keep yourself educated and keep that learning ongoing and find your sources that you find credible because there's a ton of stuff out there and some of them are not always the best. So I kind of go for, when I listen to podcasts and stuff, I look for kind of bullet points, like simple to the point for the average consumer type information. And then I also look at credentials, kind of what they're, I, I like a lot of economists too, because I think the way they analyze data is real, you know, it's, it comes from a good place. So Wes is better at giving these presentations to me. So I brought him along because he's prettier and figured that's going to do a little better at um, kind of summarizing what we're seeing in our industry right now for 2024. Am I ready? Yeah, All right. All right, well, hey, thank you all for coming. I mean, it's nasty weather outside, but you came out to see information. And look, it's, it gets dangerous to give a, um, a forecast or a rate forecast or anything like that. But I will share with you just like Amy mentioned, the sources that we see and look, our ears to the ground every single day because it has to be, right? So based off the information we're, we're getting, based off what we're seeing already and shifting, uh, I want to share that with you today and then open it up uh, to some Q&A um, as well. And that can be about anything, market-wise, products, uh, what we have going on and all that. And uh, I want to make it a little interactive. So first of all, I want to kind of qualify the room a little bit. Like how many, how many of you guys, 23? 23. Okay. <laughs> so we got some experience up here as well. Amy's been in the business for 23 years. I'm in my 22nd year. You got me by a year. Uh, so we've seen just about, well, not everything obviously, but we saw the Great Recession and all that. And I tell you, what we've gone through in the past 18 months from a mortgage standpoint is way worse than what happened, what I experienced in 2008, 2009. And obviously you guys know why. Why did, why did that happen? Oh, interest oh. rates, right? So back in 2008, we, didn't have, we did not have interest rates go from two and a half to eight in such a short period of time. So obviously everybody's sitting, sitting there. So not only first time home buyers, Potential first-time home buyers, which are your biggest segment of buyers today that are staying in their mom's basement or um, living with a buddy still, staying in an apartment and all that. You've got people that are rate locked in at the two and a half to three and a half percent rates, right? 78% of uh, folks are locked in at under 5%. And, and when that's sad, I'm gonna say some stats today. I, I, I forgot that one. Yeah, so I think it's under, 78% or so are, uh, people that have a mortgage are under 5%, all right? Here's what I thought was some kind of cool news though. 11.5 or so of people that have a mortgage are over six. How is that? Well, people have been buying houses in the last 18 months. All right, so that's, that's a big thing that I'm excited about this year. So obviously rates went up, big shock factor, but what we're seeing, I'll tell you just what we're seeing at Pilgrim Mortgage, month over month, we're up 50% in leads, right? We're up 35% in applications. Now, I know that's, that's one month, but I believe, so all the stuff we've been talking about, these updates we've been given, that's happened over the last several, that we've been getting over the last several months, we're finally seeing it come to fruition. So I'm really, really excited about this year. That's one of the questions I was going to ask. Who thinks this year is going to be better for you than last, than 2023? Anybody think it's not? Anybody worried? All right. It depends. All right. If you're talking about quality of life, you're probably going to be a lot busier. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Your, your quality of life, you know, less time with family because yeah. I think you're going to be busier, right? Yeah. Uh, but we need it after the last 18 months. You spent a lot of time with the family over the last 18 months. So now it's time to get back to work, right? Um, I'm really excited about it. I think it's going to be a phenomenal year. One, as I asked you earlier, those that are, are still in it, guess how many people are not in it this year? Mortgage and real estate wise. 
So the fact that you're here gives you more opportunity. Plus, I, there's some flyers. I don't know if you guys got one. Um, so some of the forecasts here. Now there's forecasts anywhere from the NBA, Fannie Mae, NAR, but most of them are predicting an increase in home sales. So NAR is actually predicting, so instead of 4.8 million sales in 23, they're predicting 5.5 million sales in 24. Okay, and that's NAR. 700,000 units. That's a big, that's a big change, right? Um, on that same flyer, so I'll just get the predictions out and I'll talk well, about Well, and let me just point out, this is exactly what we're talking about. If you look, these are predictions from different entities. So you got to kind of take your resources and pick and choose and, and kind of average them together. Because this is, what is it? I can't see without my glasses. I know it's Zillow, Realtor. Um, I ain't got my glasses either. Okay. But anyway, Perfect. different sources. Case Shiller and all that. Yeah. But listen, what is one of the, what is one of the other factors... <laughs> why people decided not to buy in the last 18 months, besides interest rates. Price. Affordability. They thought prices were going to go down. Hey, you're not in the audience, Amy. <laughs> Affordability. There's a decrease in the amount of, of house they can afford based on a couple of years ago. True. So that's kind of with interest rates, right? And taxes. So the major appreciation uh, up in the double digits, well into the double digits for a couple of years in a row. So that made obviously interest rates tripled, right? So obviously affordability, but the other, another reason that I've heard so many times, everybody's just gonna sit there and wait for home prices to crash. Mm -hmm. yeah. Right. Yeah. right? How many of you heard that? Yeah. I'm waiting for it to crash, waiting for the bubble, waiting for that. It ain't happening. It's just simple economics 101. There's not enough homes. There's not enough homes, right? So if you could equate it back to the Great Recession, there were about 5 million housing units on the ground. Builders were building more houses than they ever had. 5 million on the ground, 30 million less people in the U.S., right, based off population. And now there's a little over a million housing units on the ground. So about a fifth, a fourth to a fifth amount of inventory available today, even though builders have been trying to build as quickly as possible, just not keeping up. The household formations on an annual basis is actually still outpacing how many houses are being built. Household formation, kids leave the house, there's a household formation, right? Household formations are still outpacing new builds, right? And then you've got about 100,000 uh, houses across the nation that go actually no more because they're dilapidated and they just go out of service, right? So anyway, we're still not keeping up with, uh, with demand. So on the same flyer, you've got different sources. Again, you've got NAR, you've got uh, uh, Case Shiller, you've got NBA, you've got all that. And they all get different predictions. The average is 2.1%. So our average of all these sources still think for 2024, we're going to see a little over 2% appreciation. Now, I will tell you that a lot of these folks have been um, changing their, um, their forecast. So, for example, NAR only has 0.7, but this was back before these interest rates have ticked down here lately. Right? So, a lot of these folks have adjusted upward. NAR just hasn't done it yet. So, I believe next time uh, NAR uh, reports their forecast for 2024, it's actually going to be higher. So, you're going to see this average 2.1 actually go up. So, a lot of folks are thinking, you know, around 3 to 4% nationwide. Bottom line, we're going to get back to some more normal appreciation. The average appreciation for 50 years was like 5%. Right, so we're getting back into a more normal market. Same thing with interest rates. So, again, interest rate prediction, right? It's not a prediction, this is what people think is gonna happen. A lot of folks think this by the third quarter. So the second half, beginning of the second half of the year, we could be around 6%. Actually, we could be possibly in the high fives by the end of the year, right? That's gonna be a big difference. So once you get below 6%, you're getting back into what a low rate was prior to the Great Recession of 2008. So when 2008 happened, the financial crisis, the government stepped in and they did a lot of quantitative easing and they are purchasing billions of dollars of mortgage-backed securities to keep rates artificially low. And that led up to the big, you know, finally the three and a half, the three, the two and a half percent rates in 2020 and 21. But it was artificially low for like 15 years. Right, so now we're getting back into a more normal market, and like I started with, you, people are more used to it. They're getting desensitized to these higher rates. And you guys saw the rates went over eight percent in October. They were over eight percent. 
So now they're in the high sixes. We've locked some folks in the high fives. Now they pay for it, right? And we've done some specials with, with Ashley and some uh, builders where there's some two one buy down options, these temporary buy downs, there's some permanent buy downs. There's a lot of options to get some of these people off the fence and it makes a big difference in the payment. But anyway, uh, right now high sixes, you could be in the high fives at the end of the year. So I think that's going to be this, this update we saw yesterday. I mean, these people are super, super optimistic. This is going to be obviously not going to be a 2021 year as far as volume, right. but this could be a real breakout year for you guys. But it really comes down to, um, yeah, so also, that deal is, and this goes for a loan officer, a builder, a real estate agent, but they're talking specifically for realtors. And the reason it's important for you to listen to information like this from good sources, hopefully you'll think we're a good source after this, um, <laughs> But it says, most agents know what's happening, right? A good agent understands what's happening, <clears throat> and a great agent can explain what's happening, okay? So it's important for you to get as much of this data. Go to the sources like Amy has talked about, some economists, some podcasts. Educate yourself because you guys are on the forefront. You are the initial contact just about every single time with that buyer and that seller, right? You have to have enough information. Now, you don't need to perform as a loan officer for sure, right? That's when you'll get them with us. You don't have to tell them exactly how the house is built. That's when you get them with, uh, with Journey, right? But you need to have a good understanding of what's happening. And when they give you that objection, no, nope, rates are too high. No, nope, home prices are coming down. You need to have that information to be able to give to them while you still got them. While you still got them on the phone or you got them in person, Give them that information, get some hooks in them, and say, you know what, that's a fantastic question. I'm gonna have a loan officer that has 23 years of experience that is awesome, you'll love her, I'm gonna have her give you a call, she can better explain that. No pressure from her, she's just gonna educate you because she doesn't care if you buy today or three months or three years from now, but she knows if she gives you enough information for you and your family to make an informed decision, you're gonna go with her and you're gonna buy a house with me one day. But let's get you to that step so you're not just kicking tires anymore, and let's get you to a point whether you want to stop being a renter and paying somebody else's landlord and go ahead and start building some real equity in your home. Because every single month you're building equity by paying the balance down, by getting some appreciation. It'll continue to happen. So I think it's a fantastic market. And I'm glad all you guys are in it still. And I just, I encourage you, what's going to make it better for you? Do the work, right? Plant the seeds today. Okay, I've been telling Amy and all the other LOs at, at our company for the last six months, look, I know it's slower. And what tends to happen for a lot of people in every industry when it's slower, tend to kind of kick back. Holidays are coming. Let's just take it easy. But I just pounded them. Listen, calls, calls, mailers, social media, videos, right? Face-to-face is belly-to-belly with people. Plant those seeds. And guess what's happening? On January 2nd, our phones started blowing up. Right, and now that's why we're up 50% month over month in leads, and that's gonna to continue to happen. March is usually a breakout month for everybody as far as closings, but those closings are happening today. They're starting today. They're starting with the phone calls that you're making. They're starting with the conversations you're having with buyers, getting them off the fence, getting more of those people that are kicking tires to actually be somebody interested, because it's amazing. Once they actually talk to us and they realize they can buy, and they actually can afford it, then they're like, you know what? I'm ready to buy. And they might've been kicking tires for six months. But then they call you and say, look, I'm ready to go see a house this weekend, right? Because now they know that they've got that ticket, they've got that letter from Pilgrim Mortgage, a local trusted lender that's going to get it done. It's going to be exactly the way it is, the way we said it was in the beginning. They're going to get updated. You guys are going to get updated. It's going to be the best experience they ever have. And now they become a buyer instead of somebody that's wasted another 12 months or 24 months of money paying somebody else's mortgage. So anyway, that's my three cents of optimism, but uh, I've... I think it's going to be fantastic. Um, what specific questions do you have about? Did I forget some stats? Well, I was, yeah, I was yeah. leaving it. I, <laughs> I just think um, one thing that I think is really beneficial to touch on is the Fed rate because everyone tends to think Fed rate is um, our market rate, and it it is to a sense it affects it, but it's not as directly related. And kind of touch upon how that works and what they're predicting for the Fed rates, the rate yeah. cuts this year and where they're at. So you've all been, you've heard so much from the news, from social media, a lot of people like us <laughs> trying to give you, give you an education on it, telling you what the Fed's doing and what they're <clears throat> predicted to do. Well, the Fed made how many rate hikes when all, when all came up? It was unprecedented how many hikes, how many rate hikes they did in such a short amount of time, yeah. right? Yeah. But they, the reason they did it, because, because inflation went up to 9% and over 9%. 
Their target is two. Their target is two, so they increased rates. Well, now the market started pulling back from the peak in, uh, in October when it was over 8% because they indicated, they kind of pivoted in their speech a little bit. Jerome Powell and all those people kind of pivoted in their speech. They basically indicated without saying directly that they're no longer going to hike anymore. Okay, and now people are betting on whether, are they going to actually lower rates in March? They may, they may not. I don't know. What's going to happen um, on that decision with price index and all the other inflation reports come out over the next couple of months. That will determine whether they lower rates in March or, or if they wait. All right, and again, those, those rates, that Fed funds rate is the overnight rate that the Fed sets that banks charge each other to borrow funds. Right, it's short term. Now that immediately impacts credit cards, car loans, and all that kind of stuff, and then long term does affect mortgage rates. It pushes mortgage rates higher because when you push lower, uh, lower term rates up, eventually the longer term rates will go higher as well. What mortgage rates really follow though is the 10-year treasury. You ever want to know where rates are going? The 10-year treasury. Here's another reason why rates are as high as they are. The 10-year treasury is trading just over 4% right now. Historically, mortgage rates are about 1.7% higher. So just say, for simplicity's sake, the 10-year treasury is 4% today. And if it's average of 1.7 higher, then we should be about uh, 5.7 instead of in the upper sixes. So we're running about two, 270 basis points higher, and that spread has been that way every, because of this market volatility, because of the uncertainty. So as rates tend to come down and inflation gets tamed, Fed starts cutting, and we start seeing that margin between the, the 10 year treasury and mortgage rates uh, uh, close as well, we can actually see even a bigger decrease in rates. All right, so I think all the stars are aligned for that to happen. How much, we don't know. <clears throat> I was gonna start out by saying, you know, what are rates gonna do? Well, they're gonna do one of three things, right? <laughs> they're gonna go up, they're gonna stay the same, or they're gonna go down. And here's a great answer you can give to these buyers, because, I mean, you don't wanna get in the business of saying, hey, yeah, rates are gonna be in the high fives. What's that gonna do to a lot of people? One, they may say, you know what, great. When they get there, call uh, uh, Yeah, call them. Right? So you gotta be careful. One, you gotta read the person, but you gotta be careful. You don't wanna be saying that and not true. Just say, hey, listen, the long-term trend is they are starting to come down. But here's the thing. If they stay this, if you buy now and they stay the same, you didn't lose anything, right? If you buy now and they go down, you can refinance. And you beat everybody else to the punch because when they go down, everybody else and their brother's gonna be out there looking for that same house. You're not gonna buy, get to buy the house that you wanted to buy, right? And, what's that? Because everybody's still moving here. That's right, that's right. And if they go up, well, you just won, right? You bought today, they go up, well, you're, you're in lower. So there's an answer for all three options, right? All three options. You know, I, I talked to a client just this morning that called in, she bought a house a year ago. You know the only reason she's, she wants to buy something else. She, she's living in shirts. She wants to buy in shirts. She doesn't like the house. How many people bought a house because they didn't like, because they didn't like the house? Well, that was an inventory issue, right? Inventory. So when rates come down, what do you think is going to happen with the inventory issue? Y'all, all of you that were in business in 2021, if you didn't go see that house in two hours, you're done, right? And then if you did. And you bid 40,000 over, you probably got beat out by a cash offer, right? So, so many of those people, look, there's so many different things I could sit here and list, I could talk to you guys for hours, but there's so many different things that are aligning that I believe are gonna add more buyers and more transactions this year. All those people that ended up buying over the last three years since COVID that didn't really love the house. So add those people to it, right? There's so many different pieces that are just gonna add more transactions in my opinion. What else? Questions. Yeah. What questions do you guys have? Yes, ma'am. The other thing you missed was the <coughs> property tax thing. The state of Texas got increased. Yeah. From 40, the exemption. From 40,000 to 100,000. Yeah. That's, yeah, that's a big difference. Another, another talking point when you're talking to these buyers, say, hey, listen, I know property taxes went up, but this is what the state just did. Again, that's you being informed, being the informed agent, so they're going to use somebody that is informed and, and that they trust. And just so you know, when I do a loan, if it's tight and they're super payment sensitive, I will go in there and manually calculate every tax municipality with the homestead and get it to them. Yeah. yeah, most people don't go to the trouble. They'll yeah. go whatever the current rates are, and that's, their, that's how they're yeah. paying the set up. It's one of my yeah. make-it-work tricks. So. 
French first. Initials MBA. Sorry. That the the initials MBA was that stand for? Or his bankers Just association. Just basketball. <laughs> not, not November, right? <laughs> Mortgage Makers Association. Yeah. Have you guys been seeing a lot of uh, cash out refis right now with so many people loaded with debt? And because of COVID, they have filled up some equity. Have you all been seeing a lot of cash out refinances? We're seeing some. We're, we're seeing some. And um, in fact, that's something we were talking about this morning. Um, just kind of doing a campaign out to on our database, our past clients, because a lot of folks don't know that you can tap into that equity, or they don't know what it looks like, or they may be <clears throat> thinking, well, I've got a three and a half percent, I don't want to go to a 6.75. But we can show a quick, we've got tools where we can literally plug in every debt that they have, the rate that they have on those debts, on those credit cards, that could be 23, 24, 25 percent, their vehicle and all that. We can plug all that in and it'll give a super quick calculation of what their new blended rate would be. So it doesn't matter as much anymore that <clears throat> their mortgage rate went from 3 to 6.75 possibly because we would re possibly reduce their monthly, total monthly obligations mm -hmm. by two grand. Mm -hmm. right? So we're putting a lot of those scenarios together. More and more people, to be honest, should be taking advantage of that. And then, of course, 100% of that interest now should be tax deductible when it was a tax, dedu tax deductible when they are paying credit card interest and car interest. So it, it makes sense for a lot of folks. Yeah. Good question. You see a lot of assumable loans. Uh, is that something that are very popular? I've heard that that been a buzzword for 18 months now. So a lot of people are talking about it. Has anybody experienced a, an assumable lo a transaction that actually yeah. closed? I know you have because your title. Like a lot. Yeah. Right now. Do you love them? No. <laughs> but they're always jacked up after closing. Yeah. And everybody's fighting. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I've got so one. I've got listing <laughs> right now. 3.1% yeah. near Lackland, yeah. and I'm surprised people haven't jumped on it yet. I think a lot of people have finally you know, come to the realization that it's, it is really, really tough. Mm -hmm. uh, so if, for those that you don't, that don't know... Exactly, Fred. I get a lot of calls asking, can you do a loan for the difference? Because they can only assume the balance, and so people are always calling me, can you do a loan for the difference? So they have to have the money for the yeah. down payment. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, not only, yeah. So anyway, assumable loan, somebody's got a 2.75 or a 3.1 like this one. They can list that on there, hey, this, this is an eligible uh, uh, assumable loan, okay? So somebody, the buyer, that goes under contract in that house, now they have to engage with the actual servicer of that note. They have to go through their process of getting approved. And think about it. These servicers, that, that's not their top priority, it right? It takes six months. Yeah, it's literally a five to six month process. That's what I've been hearing from title companies. I heard uh, Matt Mako talking to him the other day. He, yeah, yeah, he was wondering yeah. that. The only reason, he said the only reason it worked is because the buyer and the seller were in the service together and they knew each other and they, they took the time and had the patience to, make, to wait it out. If I was a seller personally, I, I would jack with it. I would, somebody's going to buy it, right? I would rather you know, get some kind of incentive to, to entice them to buy instead of doing that. And then also want to make sure you know if you have a better Make darn sure that you do not let a non-veteran, this is my opinion now, let a non-veteran assume that loan. It is not free up that veteran's eligibility. Correct. Okay? So they can do it. They can do it. But, but I would not, I would never advise it. So I would say if you've got a, if you've got a veteran that's listing a house, I wouldn't, I wouldn't do it. Wow, that was some great information. And now, you see why I like these guys so much. Um, I'm going to have their information uh, coming up in the next slide. And if you want to reach out to them, feel free to do that. But if you like this video, really want you to hit that like button. Of course, I want you to subscribe to my channel. But once again, most importantly, share these videos with anybody considering moving to the beautiful Texas Hill Country area to include Shirt Cibolo, Randolph Air Force Base area, Bulverde, uh, New Braunfels, Bernie, all those places I know way too much about. All right, that's going to do it for today. Take care now. Bye.